We believe that your word is all we need. We believe that your word is not in chains. We believe it's the word of life. We believe that it's sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing the division of bone and marrow, soul and spirit. It discerns the thoughts and intents of our heart. We believe that your word is all we need for life. We believe that your word is greater than this world. We believe that, God, so we ask you to pour your spirit upon us now to know exactly what your word has to say. We don't want to miss anything, whether it's rebuke or encouragement, whether it's a word of exhortation or a word of correction, God. May your word speak life. Life. Amen. Amen. Off of the news, Oklahoma, three young men get in a car, they see a kid jogging, and they go, boom, they shoot him in the back, bullet goes into his heart, and drops dead. And they ask him, why did you do that? The kid said, we were bored. Right out of the news just about a year and a half ago, young kid, 17 years old, goes to school and he shoots a few of his quote-unquote friends in school, gets convicted. He declares something so disgusting in the presence of all that would see, he scrawls a per across his shirt, killer, and he says to them this, hold your heart, hold your anger, he says. The same hand that pulled the trigger will masturbate tonight at the thought of it and killed your kids. That's what he said to their parents. Just out of the news, young man, 15 or 16 I think he was, shoots his mother in the face, goes into a school and murders 14 or 18 kids it was. I don't even remember. There's so many of them. I don't even remember. He, sh he shoots them with a high-powered rifle. People that clean it up will never be the same. Never. So you've never seen what a 223 shell, high powered, coming out of a high powered rifle, can do to a 30 pound child. Right out of the news. I can't. Guy goes in a couple weeks ago, Virginia, naval base. Boom, 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 boom. The other day, a woman drives a car. She's, she's sure that the president is flying planes into buildings. Uh, I don't need to go on. We've become hardened to it. We're far more distracted. You guys know what I'm saying, right? Ryan, why, why would you do this? Why would you say these things? Are you trying to bum us out? <laughs> no, I'm trying to teach the Bible. <laughs> Chapter 3, verse 1, the book of 2 Timothy. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Please give me your attention. If you want to see the darkness of this world, for darkness, the Bible says, is where men do their deeds. And there is no greater darkness than cyberspace. You guys know what cyberspace is. That is the darkness that lies somewhere in between a keyboard and a screen. And men find darkness, women find darkness, and they hide in it, and they turn the lights out in their room, and they close the shades, and they type things that you could not believe a human being would say, for even I shudder at reading some of the comments. You go onto YouTube. I mean, you're talking about YouTube. YouTube is, I mean, that's a kiddie site. 
as compared to some of the stuff that's out there. You cannot believe the things that people shall post in the comment section. If you go to a news site where they have comments, you would not believe how darkness has ignited a black fire in the hearts of human beings that you go, don't you, or don't you fear that somebody will someday keep you accountable to those words? <laughs> and they laugh. It's just a joke. And you find out there, some of them are 12, 13, 14-year-old kids. Some of them are housewives and fathers and you just again in the last days perilous times will come <laughs> talking to a kid yesterday in my store kid from Boca East Boca lots of money oh my, my friend just and he's got this faraway look in his eyes oh man my friend just died I said what, what happened oh man he was doing acid and he got into a fight on the beach and he got kneed in the head and he just died and then another friend of mine he was driving like 90 miles an hour and then he hit this old man and now he's gonna go to jail he's gonna go to jail for like 15 years for vehicular manslaughter it's like it, did you learn anything I mean are you oh yeah man yeah, I just smoke herb now. I don't, you know, I don't. <laughs> Perilous times will come, even in East Boca. Now, if you come from the hood, I come from a little bit more lower middle class neighborhood in Queens. I know what perilous times are. I've seen men die in front of me. You know what I'm talking about? Perilous times have come, <laughs> have come. If this is the last days, then this is what truly the last of the last days. You know what I'm saying? For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Now, at first that sounds like that doesn't fit there, does it? No, it doesn't. Yeah, it absolutely does. The number one problem in our society today is the breakdown of society, the complete breakdown of the American family. That's what's wrong. 70% of black children are born out of wedlock. Over 40% of white children are born out of wedlock. And almost every one of those things, almost every one of those Examples I've used out of a newspaper, you trace back to their mother and their father and you see broken home, broken home, broken home, broken home, broken home. In my house, broken leg, <laughs> broken face. <laughs> and then every once in a while, God reaches down his eye that goes to and fro across the whole earth he goes, you, I want you. Me, me, I'm filthy, I'm disgusting, I'm a sinner. It's just the person for the job. And you're, like, you're blown away. And here you are, and I could say these things to you and you could rise up in a little anger and go, man, no, no. Not the right response. The right response is, man, people need Jesus. And you have to find your people group. I was online at an abortion clinic about 25 years ago, taking my girlfriend for her abortion. It was my fifth or sixth one, I don't remember. And there was these people online and they had signs of mutilated babies. And, and I said, these people don't know what they're talking about. It's, it's not a baby, it's, it's, it's an egg and it's goo, it's nothing. And they stood in the doorway and I said, this is hard enough. If this guy gets in the way. I'm going to break his face. That's what I'm going to do. This sucks as it is. I don't need this added to it. Now, the thought of not doing it or, or, or giving the kid up for adoption, no, that couldn't enter my, my worldly brain. 
Instead, I was about to do something. And the guy stood at the door and he walked up to me and he said, can I pray for you before you go in there? Took me totally off guard. Now, I, as growing up Catholic, I was like, yeah, sure, you know, why not? And as I sat, sat there and, and they all like started holding hands and they grabbed my hands on either side, I felt the guy's hand literally shaking out of fear, but with courage. I mean, here's this guy, I mean, I, you know, tattoos and walking around making believe I was a gorilla, hardening my face at the time to make myself look tough. And here he's a skinny little, <laughs> but prayed. I wish I can tell you that the, it ended where I didn't go and continue. I did. I, I, we did, me and my girlfriend at the time. We did continue our quest to abort a child. And, but something happened because prayer went forth to God. And it was soon thereafter that I surrendered my whole life and heart to the Lord Jesus. And he plucked me. Like a, like a fire from the brand, like a, like a coal, man. And he just said, and, and, and here's what I see, all coals before me, brands plucked from the fire. You want to make a difference in this world, it doesn't take your money. You want to make a difference in this world? These are the last of the last days. And let me give you the good news now, okay? It's only going to get worse, but we aren't going to be here. We will be raptured. When the crap really hits the fan, guys, we're getting pulled up out of here. You win. You're on the winning team. Do you understand that? You're fighting against a defeated foe. You can't lose. So what ought you do knowing this? Love the hell out of them. Literally. Paul continuing to explain these things to the church in Timothy's presence. He says, having a form of godliness, verse 5, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Having a form of godliness, after describing what these men will look like, lovers of money, lovers of themselves. They have a form of godliness. They'll have a cross outside the church, maybe even inside. They will use the name of Jesus but won't be the same Jesus that we worship. They will give you sermonettes and make you feel good. And don't mention your sin, the blood of Christ. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power therein. For there is power in the blood. There is power in the name. There is. And he came to set the captives free. And I don't care how many tricks, schemes, conferences. You don't need another teaching. What you need is the power of God in your life to pray and to say, God, baptize me. And the Lord would look down and go, why? What's the matter? Everything! We think, you know, or we go through the list of prayers. I got here, here are all the cards we went through. Here they are, here they are. Well, man, there's a lot of stuff there. You think God can't do it all like that? Can do, he's a can do God. Stop, oh, there's a great marriage teaching here. Oh, there's a great teaching on freedom of, uh, of getting out of alcohol. Oh, there's another great program. Listen, stop. Those things without the power of God do nothing. Nothing. Zero. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. Are you with me? Amen. Where is the power of God? I yearn for the power of the Holy Spirit in the lives of men. 
I'm so tired of meeting people from churches. Oh, I'm from so-and-so church, and you sense nothing. If you have that discerning spirit, if you have that paranoia of the spirit of the living God, and you meet them, and they tell you about the church they're going to. Yeah, man, we've got a thousand people in our church now. Yeah, we moved down here from Oklahoma. We show a picture of our pastor and thing, and, and we play videos of him, and, and there's, there's 3,000 people here. We have five services now. People come forward. You ever eat a popcorn without salt? Did you cook that in? That's what it's like sometimes. You talk to people who don't have the anointing of God. That's what it's like when you meet somebody who have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. It's like eating popcorn without salt. having a form of godliness, denying its power from such people, turn away, verse 6. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jambres resisted Moses, so do these resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds, disapproved concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifest to all, as theirs was also. Interesting section of scripture. You know where Janus and Jambres are from? I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it properly. Nobody knows where they're from. <laughs> they don't appear anywhere else in scripture. Now, Jewish tradition says those were the names of the two magicians who, st who stood next to Pharaoh. Do you remember when Moses was before Pharaoh? And he took his staff and he put it down on the ground. And Janus and Jambres, Jewish tradition says, they walked up as magicians behind Pharaoh and said, oh, we can do the same thing. And they threw down their staff. They have a form of godliness, but they deny its power. They can do parlor tricks and they have magic. And listen, you could go see Vitor Belfort today if you leave here right now. Vitor Belfort is at Church by the Glades, man. Vitor Belfort, man, he's like my favorite fighter. And they got a cage. They set up an octagon at the church, man. <laughs> now let me tell you, this has crept in so slowly. Because 20 years ago, when I first started going to church, my pastor would have never, ever, ever put up with this stuff. And now, it's all over, man. It's all over, and it's accepted. Wait a second. 20 years ago, you, you start going to church. How many of y'all been walking with the Lord 15 years or more? Okay, many of you. Imagine 15 years ago somebody said, hey, they're going to set up this big cage where guys beat, them, beat each other up in, and there's going to be a guy who beats other people up, and he's going to come and speak at a church. You'd be like, great, thanks. But that's culturally relevant now. That's culturally relevant. My God isn't into cultural relevance. You know what he's into? The Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So Janice and John Bruce, they throw down their staff, and it also turns into a snake. See, we can do that too. But when you have a form of godliness but deny its power, let me tell you what really happens. Exactly what happened. Moses' staff, which turned into a snake, devoured Janice and John Bruce. Ate them up right there. Swallowed them right down. See, he who knew no sin became sin to us that our sins would be swallowed up, that death would be swallowed up in life. Not parlor tricks, not games. But, verse 10, you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and out of all of them the Lord delivered me. Please give me your attention. You can look that up in the book of Acts of all the different churches. 
that Paul went to preaching the gospel and all the different things where he was beaten with rods, he was stoned, left for dead outside the city, he was shipwrecked. You can go through all the things, see that went through. I love the difference between, ready? Watch this. Lovers of money, bowed, prousters. Prousters, that's good. <laughs> Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful. Un now look at the difference of this list here. Doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance. How beautiful. How beautiful. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, teaching. What is teaching? What is doctrine? What the Word of God says. Because by the time this is over, and it's another few minutes, I'm going to explain to you, this is all you need, guys. What's the problem? Job? Answers in here. What's the problem? Relationship? Answers in here. What's the problem? Sickness? Answers in here. Does it have all the... I mean, it's just a book. Are you still one of those guys that believes in the inerrancy of God's Word? You think it's perfect? I mean, there's so many contradictions in this thing. No, there's not. A man named Voltaire in France 125 years ago. He said this, in a hundred years, nobody will even know. No, actually, he said this 250 years ago. I'm sorry. He said, nobody will even know what the Bible is in a hundred years. Anybody know who Voltaire is? And you guys that go to college, and of course, he's very big. Do you know what they do now in Voltaire's basement? They print Bibles. <laughs> and Voltaire's dead! <laughs> In case you didn't know. Just letting you know, he's still dead. <laughs> Doctrine, manner of life, purpose. Oh, I love that purpose. You see that word purpose there? That's my word. That's my word, purpose. Because I remember as a non-Christian, as a non-believer, walking about thinking I knew Christ, thinking I had a relationship with God, I had no purpose. But coming to the Lord gave me purpose. I remember the first time as a young Christian taking a shower because my pastor said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to, when you take a shower, ask God to make an appointment for you that day. I was like, what does he mean? Ask God to set an appointment so that you could share him with somebody else. I remember the next day, Monday morning, taking a shower, and God... I'd love to tell somebody about you, but I got nothing to say. I don't even know, I don't know your Bible, man. I don't even, I can't even remember John 3.16. But make an appointment for me that, that I could share. That same day, I led the first person I ever led to the Lord. And I was like, <laughs> I remember, it was just, uh, say this, uh, what is, how does he say that again? Hold on, let me think about this. And then, and I tried to repeat the, the sinner's prayer, and the guy said everything I said, and even, uh, and he did the, uh, you know. <laughs> I was like, wow, there's power in this thing, man. There's power in this thing. I have purpose. I have purpose in life. I wake up every morning not wondering who the next conquest, whether it be financial, sensual, other. I have purpose. You have purpose. You think you're a housewife? Nay, you're not a housewife. You're a Christian woman. You just happen to be working as a housewife now. You think you're a salesperson? You think you're a carpet cleaner? You think you're a safe installer? You think you're a computer expert? That's not your purpose, that's your job. Your purpose is to bring people to the light of Christ. You think you're a fighter? <laughs> I'll tell you something, more than anything else, those fighters know. Do all the jujitsu you want. You could have the hardest punch in the world. It takes this one second. Your whole career is over. We've got this guy in the gym right now. He's got like 40 fights. His career was over like last year. 
And all of a sudden, he's won two fights, and now he's like the greatest. Everybody's talking about how he's going to tie. I think to myself, this is so crazy the way this, this thing works. Our perspective has got to be his perspective, not the world's perspective, because the world tells you you're finished, you're done, you're over. It just takes one victory. And I'm not even talking about fighting at that point. One victory. You know what the problem with my brother was? My brother died a few years ago of drug overdose after how many years of abuse? He had no victories in his life. He didn't know what victory was because his purpose was to make a lot of money. And he never made a lot of money. The purpose was to have a lot of women. And he wasn't as good looking as me, so he didn't have a lot of women. <laughs> no victories. Dropped out of three colleges. Played semi-pro ball for a while and got cut because he couldn't stop smoking. No victories. I fear that for my young brothers there. If you're victory, if you're looking for purpose, what's your purpose? What is it? If your purpose is to be successful, whatever it is that you're doing, you pretty much failed already. Because the highest of highs, the heights will never be what you think they are. However, Imagine if your purpose is to take, and I look at you guys and I know exactly what some of you guys are studying or doing, and competitions and basketball, swimming, mixed martial arts, teacher. If your purpose is to bring people to the Lord and you say, God, help me to do what I do and bring people to the Lord, wow. Now God says, man, I'm going to make you the greatest fighter on earth. Why? so that others could know that in your weakness, my strength is made perfect. Or he could say, I want you to lose five fights in a row. I'm going to bring you to the depths of the depths. Let everybody see you in dust and ashes, and then I will lift you up. For the Bible says the righteous may fall seven times and rise again. But if your purpose is to just shine the light of God, whatever it is that you're doing, it doesn't matter because you're shining the light of God. Whether you're repairing equipment, you're a mom, a foster mama, whatever. Purpose. You see that? I'm going to go on. Faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, Iconium, Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of all of them... See what he says there? And out of them all the Lord delivered me. That is a tattoo verse. You got to get that tattooed like on your own. Out of all of them the Lord delivered me. Because the next one's not a tattoo verse. You ready? Number 12. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Boy, does that shine in the face to those churches. One of them's right up the block. The Word of Faith movement. They tell you if you're sick, if you're broke, you don't have enough faith. You've got to speak it out. Name it and claim it. Right? It just says there, but all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Well, if you're suffering persecution, it's because you don't have enough faith having a form of godliness, but denying the power therein. But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Some of these men are sincere. I watched on TV the other day, uh, Joel Osteen did this interview. Man, he's a believer, man. He believes in the message and the power of his message. He does. He believes in it. And he's positive, man, and he's uplifting, and he's got the sweetest smile. He does. And I think I look at the guy and say, oh, he's a nice guy. What a nice guy. It's no wonder so many people go to his church. He's a nice guy. Some even from our own movement, the Calvary Chapel movement. I get in the mail, I get all the books they've written, and there they are. <laughs> <laughs> I look at this thing, I go, do you believe this? I knew this guy 20 years ago. He never acted like this. What the heck happened to this guy? He's writing books, and every book's got his page on the cover. Your best life. Power through the trials. <laughs> we laugh because we don't want to weep. I know these men, and I'm ashamed. 
We're having a, a, a big pastors conference in February. Our movement, Calvary Chapel, Merritt Island Conference. And I look at the list of speakers and I was like, how could you have this man speak there? And I got to be that guy. I got to be that guy. So I call up the church and I go, how can you have this man speak with you? How? You know, uh, it wasn't my choice. It was so-and-so's choice. And it, I won't be there. I won't be attending. Like they care, right? And let me tell you their response. Well, you know, that guy's got 10,000 people that go to his church. Oh, and I'm sure God's so impressed with 10,000 people. <laughs> so impressed because you know if there's a lot of people God's got to be in it got to be I mean little churches little God big church big God you know you hear it preach from the pulpit she healthy sheep reproduce where's that in the Bible <laughs> well it's just logical you know if shut up <laughs> Yeah, Joel, I just, I don't want to talk about negative things. God bless you, Bob. Thank you. Joel, man, he's a nice guy. He believes it. Do you believe that homosexuals are going to hell? I believe that love is the power that sets men free from whatever it is. I was like, say it. Say it, Joel. Be diplomatic, but say it. Whatever it is that... Say it, Joel! Say it! He didn't. Sin. He said it! I said it. It's a sin. Homosexuality is a sin. I said it! It's another S word. Sad. I have a form of godliness, but they deny its power. They are deceiving and being deceived. You see verse 13 again, verse 14. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. And from childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. I love the turn he takes here. He talks about the power of death. And then he talks about the power of life. And then he says, here's where you get it from. Scripture. Scripture. Now that doesn't mean to say that if you're new to the Lord, you're new to church, and you haven't had a chance to read scripture, that you have less power, because as much Holy Spirit's living in you now as ever will live in you, ever, ever, ever. But the scriptures will teach you and help you unlock it. Unlock it. These young men here, everything is in them that is in their fathers and mothers. They will be big and strong just like them. Everything is in there, but they got to grow to it. They got to eat right. They got to take care of themselves. They got to stay away from drugs and alcohol and other stupid things. Same thing with us. Why? Verse 16, one of my favorite memory verses. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. You see those three words, inspiration of God? You could circle it and write next to it. Don't write this, but there is no English that explains exactly what it is. The closest translation is breathed from God. It's literally uh, pneuma... The Theos Numa, I think. It's, it's, it's out of the breath of God. All scripture is given by God's breath and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete. That word complete also means finished perfect, thoroughly equipped for every good work. You don't need anything else beside this book. You understand that? Nothing else. You don't. You don't need anything else. You don't need anything else. You don't need the latest and greatest pastor. You don't need the, uh, the gold dust falling from the sky. You don't need holy laughter. You guys, that was years ago. I don't know if you've been around the church more than a few years. At, at certain churches on the west coast of Florida, 
there was gold angel dust falling. Not, not the, see, when I was a kid, angel dust was the stuff that people smoked, and <laughs> it was PCP. And they walked around like zombies. Those are some dang, man, phew, I thought that was the end of the world. My neighborhood, zombie dust was like everywhere. My brother got into that stuff, and he'd walk around like a zombie. I'd be like, ain't no way I'm ever doing that stuff, ever. I don't care how good looking the girl is. But there was angel dust that fell, and everybody flocked there. And they'd, oh, look, there it is. And then some churches were holy laughter. Same, same area, different church. The spirit was moving in different ways. It doesn't say that in here. Here's what the Bible says, Luke 11, 11. If your son asks you for an egg, will you give him a rock? If he asks you a piece of bread, you're going to give him a scorpion? Something like that. I might have reversed that. So if you, ask the, if you ask your father for the Holy Spirit, he's going to give you the Holy Spirit. But sometimes, and this is where we close, you can close your Bible, and I suggest you reread that chapter for some extra study at home. Sometimes God draws you out. He hides the message that he wants to be hidden for those that are serious. The Bible says that he spoke in parables so that those that didn't want to know the truth didn't have the truth. And, and, and the apostles, they would get so, why do you talk like that? So hearing, they won't hear. And seeing, they won't see. But he did it again. I hate when he talks like that. He said to Peter, come out of the boat. Walk on the water. People don't walk on water. Come on. And here's what he's saying to you. Come out of your comfort zone. In the last days, we are in the last days. Things are going to go haywire. And you got to be careful. Because there's one thing to be a part of a society and there's another thing to be society. We have no choice. We look, we dress, we speak. It's, there's a part of us that is just, it, it's going to happen. It's an impossibility. You can't, we can't, you know, be like the, uh, what are they? The, the, um, the Amish or the, uh, the uh, what are you, the Mennonites. Bless their hearts. You can't do that. You can't be effective. But he wants you to be effective where you are. So, if you are one of those people, man, you're hungry for the things I'm saying, but you're not sure they're real. You're hungry, you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. I want, I've called out, but I'm not getting. Here's what you need to do. You need to go to the beach at about one o'clock in the morning. I want you to run down the sand until you can't run anymore. I want you to fall on your hands and knees. I want you to take two handfuls of sand. I want you to put it on your hair. Rub it in. No, don't do that part. I just, it'd be funny though. I just want you to cry out to God and say, God, I want your power. I need your power. Set me free. This is why athletes understand the power of God more than most. This is why mothers understand the power of God more than any. Because they've come to the end of themselves. This comedian is funny. He said, you know what having a third kid's like? It's like drowning and having somebody hand you a baby. <laughs> Moms know, man. I come home sometimes, and let me tell you, I get up early in the morning, and I do my devotions, my study, I go to the gym, and I train. I get, I get home, I take a shower, I eat something quick, I go to work, I'm at work for seven, eight, nine hours sometimes. I come home, it's eight o'clock at night, and I get home, and I look at my wife's eyes, and I know. <laughs> it's not my time to rest. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, she, she, just, she just mouths the word vertical. I'm going to get vertical. 
<laughs> if anybody comes in the room, I will shoot them. <laughs> She's never actually said that. I just thought that would. You got to come out. You young guys, I know this is the biggest time for you guys to have doubt. Now is the time doubt will kill you. Because you don't see it. You know, you're busy about your life. You got school and you got your, your sports and you got to. Uh, Austin always tells you guys, you got to come out. You want the power of God, you got to look for it. Sometimes you just got to look for it. It's great when God shows up in the miraculous and you can say a quick prayer. We can pray over you, man. All of a sudden, wow, your wife's pregnant. It's great. I love it. That's not how it always works. But if you really need the power of God, look for it. Search for it. Cry out. Go for a walk. Up. Go for a run. Go for whatever. When your flesh finally comes to the end of yourself and you're broken, I'll tell you what I did. And this is where I'm going to finish. I used to, I used to run before my knees finished. I used to take the headphones and I used to put in my ears and I used to run. I used to run 5K three times a five, three, just over three miles, three times a week. And coming around the final turn, I used to sprint for the last six tenths of a mile. My block is six tenths of a mile long, so I know exactly how long it was. I used to sprint. And before I got to the end, I couldn't have air. My, my legs were, but the, the, the worship was in my ears. And just every once in a while, it would just, my spirit would just soar, man, to another place. And my body would cease to be tired. And it was just, it's the craziest thing when, when your body's at the end of it, it says you could just soar. You guys that have worked out with Matt and, and Christian, he pushes you, doesn't he? My daughter's coming home. I hate him so much, and he's so nice. I hate him. <laughs> Matt, Matt and Christian do the uh, CrossFit for you guys that didn't know. And uh, Don't be a part of this world. I, what, what, what more can I say? You know, I'm done. I've finished. I've left it all out here. Find the power of God. Don't stay in your sin and your filth and your waste. It's not true. The enemy's lied to you. The enemy has told you there's no escape. It's a lie. There is escape. The power of God is real. And I don't care if you're 60, 70, 30, 40, 15, 20. I don't care. The power of God is available. He sticks his hand on says, Take it. Take it. Take it. Okay. All right. Let's pray. Father, we ask for the power of God. For your word says that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. Your word says that there is power in the blood. Your word says... Your word is a double-edged sword. Power. God, please fall upon us in power. Holy Spirit, we ask you to empower, to baptize, to set captives free, to empower those who are already free to go and share your light and your love with a dark and dying world. Help, Lord. Help us. We need you. God, I just sense that there is... Man. If you are in need of that power, and your heart is so yearning, and you are desperate for that power, just stand up. Stand up. Hallelujah. Elders and deacons, I want you to go around anointing with oil. Anybody that's standing up, if they're standing up, anoint them, please. Pastors, elders, deacons, just anoint them with oil. Um, Leah, would you come up and play a song real quick? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just another five minutes. This is worth it, guys. It's worth it. I'll pray while you guys anoint. <clears throat> Father, we have no place else to go. Good. God, we have no place else to go. The world, it, it offers us a fake power, a fake light. The world offers us death, God, and we've chosen death. We've devoured it. God, we, we put it in our homes and we look at it. We, we put it on our phones and we, we need it. God, forgive us. We, we stand before you starving yet stuffed. We stand before you full of strength yet weak. God, we stand before you. We bow before you, God, wondering if you're real. 
And if it's true, God, even if you are real, is it true that you give us what we need? God, we've seen and we've experienced so much and the, the strength of our government has given us a false sense of security. We believe that your word says the government shall be upon your shoulders and you shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Lord, we stand before you now begging you, send your power. Lord, you said in your word that it's expedient, it's good for us that you go away, for then the helper would come. Holy Spirit, at a time like this, we need you more than ever. God, forgive us. Holy Spirit, God, forgive us for neglecting you. Forgive us for ignoring you. Forgive us for being afraid of you. Holy Spirit of a living and loving God, Pour upon us strength. Pour upon us victory. Pour, pour upon us mercy. Pour upon us truth. Holy Spirit, teach us what it means to live, truly live a Holy Spirit-filled life. We need you desperately, God. Holy Spirit, fall upon your people. For mothers need help with their sons. For fathers need help with their jobs. For we all need help with our, with our sensuality, God. We all need help to understand your plan, to give us, as your word says, doctrine, purpose, manner of life, patience, long-suffering. Holy Spirit, cry out to you, God. Cry out. Holy Spirit, fall upon us. Spirit, we're not afraid to see miracles. We're not afraid to experience signs and wonders. We are not afraid. Holy Spirit, baptize us. We need you desperately, desperately. All those are standing up and that have been anointed with oil. I want you either. There's a story that we're going to look at next week on Wednesday in the book of 1 Samuel where this woman, Hannah, she went before God and she spoke, but her mouth moved. But she was speaking in her heart. And the idiot that was looking at her said, woman, you're drunk, you're drunk. And she said, no, my Lord, I'm not. I'm desperate for God she received her prayer and a son Samuel was born just for the next 20 30 seconds you speak out to God just speak it but you don't have to make a distress just speak to God just speak to him ask him for that power Always on my
Thank you for hearing our prayers, God. Your Bible says that you always hear our prayers. And there is not one here who spoke a word, who uttered in their heart or in their mouth a prayer that you did not hear and you want to answer. Make us blessable. Make our lives a channel for your spirit to pour in and through. We need you and we love you. And may everything we do bring honor to you, God, no matter where it is. We're not asking you to take us out of this world. We're just asking you to make us effective through this world. We're not asking you to relieve us of our, of our trials. We're just asking you to give us strength through the trial. May we proclaim, like David, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. These things we pray to Christ's glory. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great weekend.